Hello everybody. Welcome back to the United Inside. And I'm Chris. Here we go again. No end to the Andre Onana Samuel Ato feud. Cameroonian pair still haven't spoken since 2022 World Cup with Rigobert Song's sides AFC ON hopes hanging in the balance. Cameroon's goalkeeper, Andre Onana, and the nation's legendary striker, Samuel Ato, have supposedly not spoken since the 2022 FIFA World Cup. What happened? The cloud that has been hanging over the Cameroonian side refuses to clear as the feud remains unresolved according to Chris Wheeler of the Daily Mail. Ato, elected as the Cameroon Football Federation president in 2021, has had a number of arguments with Onana and the player was sent home for disciplinary issues at the 2022 World Cup. Onana retired from international duty before being recalled, yet he has since been further accused of disrespecting his national team after arriving at AFC ON late in order to minimize the Manchester United games he missed. What Wheeler said posting on X, Wheeler said, there doesn't appear to be any change in Andre Onana's feud with Cameroon FA President Samuel Ato. It said they haven't spoken since the World Cup in Qatar, and their relationship is broken and irreconcilable. Onana could be back at Manchester United this week if Cameroon go out of AFC ON on Tuesday. The bigger picture, the rift between Onana and Ato does not appear to have an end in sight. The disagreements between the nation's star goalkeeper and president will only serve to hamper Cameroon's chances of victory at not just this year's AFC ON, but in future tournaments as well. What next for ONANA? Onana's Cameroon are on the brink of elimination from AFC ON. They sit third in the group behind Senegal and Guinea having accrued just one point. They face Gambia on Tuesday knowing qualification is only possible if they better Guinea's result against Senegal. Manchester United now ready to sell £350,000 a week player who Sir Jim Ratcliffe wants gone. Manchester United are reportedly ready to offload Casemiro, with Sir Jim Ratcliffe's new football in hierarchy wanting the midfielder gone. The Brazilian international has struggled for form and fitness this season with Casemiro looking like a completely different player after what the midfielder managed to achieve last year with the Red Devils. Earning a reported £350,000 a week, Casemiro is also one of the highest paid players at United, and the Old Trafford side are now willing to take drastic action over the 31-year-old. According to the Daily Star, Ratcliffe's Ineos group are open to reaching a payoff agreement with Casemiro, which could see United lose up to £20 million to get rid of the Brazilian. Indeed, Whilst Casemiro's wages are rather outlandish, the midfielder showed why season why United made such a huge financial commitment to bring the South American superstar to Manchester. And whilst offloading Casemiro isn't the worst idea in the world, Eric Ten Hag should be working to get the best out of the former Real Madrid Dynamo, which the Dutch coach clearly can do. Manchester United could be making a mistake in offloading Casemiro. There's no denying that Casemiro's form has dropped off this season with the intensity of the Premier League clearly starting to show for the 31-year-old. However, outright offloading the midfielder doesn't seem like the most productive thing for United to do, even if Casemiro is one of the club's highest paid players. It's clear that the Brazilian still enjoys playing for United and is highly respected amongst his teammates, with Ten Hag clearly a big fan of Casemiro. And the Dutch coach should be given time to try and get Casemiro back to his best, with the former Madrid star a sensation last year for United. Hello everybody, this is Chris again on it. Here we go again. Man United edge Real Madrid as Kylian Mbappe's free summer transfer moves closer. Kylian Mbappe could leave Paris Saint-Germain on a free transfer with a host of top clubs interested. Kylian Mbappe's Paris Saint-Germain future is up in the air once again, with the French superstar able to leave his current club on a free transfer at the end of the season. He came close to joining Real Madrid previously and continues to be talked up as a future Galactico, but the majority of Express Sport readers think he should join Manchester United. The future at Old Trafford under Sir Jim Ratcliffe is looking a shade brighter and one way for the Brit to endear himself further to the fans would be to land one of the best players on the planet in Mbappe. The 25-year-old is reportedly open to playing in the Premier League according to ESPN, especially if Real Madrid fell to match his financial demands. PSG have reportedly offered him a new contract to remain in the French capital worth £86 million a year but until he signs on the jotted line speculation will run rife. And Express Sport readers believe that if Mbappe were to leave the Parc des Princes, Old Trafford would be the perfect home. Of the readers who were polled, 30% believe that Mbappe should join United on a free transfer. The Red Devils received the highest number of votes, 
just edging Real Madrid who had 29% of the votes. Following in third was Liverpool, who Mbappe's mother and agent does have an affinity for, as Jurgen Klopp's outfit took 21% of the votes. Chelsea and Arsenal both had 8% each as relative outsiders for Mbappe's signature, while Real Madrid's fierce rivals Barcelona registered 4% of the votes in what would be a bitter pill to swallow for Carlo Ancelotti's side. With Mbappe's PSG contract up at the end of the season, he is now able to speak to non-French clubs regarding a potential pre-contractual agreement. The League One champions are hopeful that he will pen a new deal and commit his long-term future to the club, but Mbappe has insisted that no decision has been made. I haven't made my decision yet, Mbappe said on January 3rd. I haven't made a choice. With the agreement I had with the president in the summer, my decision is not important as we manage to protect all the parties and preserve the serenity of the club for the challenges to come, which is the most important. So we will say that it, the decision, is secondary. Despite fans believing that he would be a perfect fit in the red half of Manchester, it is unlikely that United will have the financial muscle to match Mbappe's demands, especially considering FFP restrictions. Manchester United have sealed a shock raid on Manchester City by snatching Chief Football Operations Officer Omar Berada in a major coup. Ineos had to make big moves to get United back on track, and their first major addition has been confirmed. United have announced the appointment of Manchester City's Chief Football Operations Officer Omar Berada as the club's new chief executive. Ineos identified Berada as their preferred appointment and he has now agreed a move across Manchester. Berada is a key part of the city operation so this feels like a massive deal for United. Let's dig into his career to date. Who is Manchester United's next CEO Omar Berada? Berada was born in Paris to Moroccan parents and his big break in football came back in 2004 as he became head of sponsorship at Barcelona. A vital part of Barca's off-field operations, Berada spent nearly eight years in that role before leaving Barcelona and eventually following former Barcelona colleague Texiki Begiristain to City. Berada has held various roles at City, initially working as director of partnership sales and then becoming a commercial director at the Etihad Stadium. Berada stepped up to the chief operating officer position in 2016 and has been a mainstay throughout the Pep Guardiola era at City. TalkSport claimed that Berada, 46, played a crucial role in bringing Erling Haaland to City, a deal which helped City win the treble last season. Berada has played a key role in terms of forming City's strategy alongside Begiristain, as seen in this video, and now brings his expertise to Old Trafford. Omar Berada deal will excite United supporters this feels like a major signal of intent from Ineos and an important capture just weeks into this new era at Old Trafford. United need to start adding top-level operators who have experience of working at the truly elite clubs. Berada's football experience comes with Barcelona and City, two absolute juggernauts during Berada's involvement. That isn't to say that Berada was the key man behind the success, but he knows what it takes to build a top team and, crucially, stay at the top. Berada's roles at Barca and City have been vital but he will now have more power than ever at Old Trafford and he must use what he has learned elsewhere to take United forward, rivaling City in the process. Eric Ten Hag has 19 days to come up with a new Manchester United plan. Man United are on their mid-season break at the moment and have a long wait until their next Premier League fixture. Manchester United's only real interest in the Premier League this weekend will come on Monday night, when Brighton and Hove Albion can go above them or when Wolves can close go enough to leapfrog Eric Ten Hag's side at Molina at the start of February. This is a quiet month for the Premier League and a quiet month for United, although they should get used to the lull in the second half of the season given the total absence of European football. A couple of kind FA Cup draws should at least serve as a distraction from a league campaign that remains miserable. United have now won just one of their last six Premier League games and the 2-2 draw with Tottenham last weekend looks better on paper than it did on the pitch. Ange Postacoglu's side were a class above their hosts and should have won. That is the continuation of an alarming trend this season. Having built their success on a measly defence and an informed Marcus Rashford last season, Ten Hag's attempts to play proactive, brave, dynamic football are regularly coming unstuck. Far too often the other team just looks to have a better structure to their play. That was the case last weekend. Despite the Postico Glue era consisting of just 23 games so far, Tottenham stayed true to their principles. Their movement came with a purpose and when they had possession there was a clear plan of attack. You couldn't say the same about United. 
Ten Hag has been unfortunate this season with injuries and illness which means he has been unable to field a settled team. But there was a clear sense in pre-season that he was taking this team on tactically. They played a much higher line and pressed more aggressively, looking to dominate opponents. But it's a game plan that has regularly backfired. We're now at a point when the Dutchman has players returning. Lisandro Martinez's return from injury last Sunday was vital and United played better when he came on. He can make a difference with them without the ball and Luke Shaw will improve the side as well. But Casemiro and Mason Mount aren't guaranteed to improve the midfield based on the performances they've delivered before their injuries. Ten Hag does have time, however. He retains the backing of Sir Jim Ratcliffe at the moment and the 19-day gap between Premier League games feels like a vital moment in his tenure. United go to South Wales to play Newport County in the FA Cup fourth round between their league outings, but that shouldn't be too taxing an assignment against the League 2 side. What the Dutchman really requires between the Old Trafford draw with Spurs and the Thursday night trip to Wolves to begin February is training time at Carrington. The break has come at an opportune moment in that regard.